So, Doctor. Yes. Uh, you're welcome to UBC. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. My name is Daniel Mugoya. Yeah. Uh, I work for UBC and uh, I normally report at Parliament yes, yes. in most cases. Yes. So, I've been following up with the NSSF probe mm. that has taken close to one month. Yes. And uh, finally, the report was tabled. Yes. Last, uh, this, this concluding week. Yes. Yeah. So, but for starters, I would love you to share with us um, a sneak peek of how you joined trade union. Yeah, to how I became a member of a trade union, uh, first of all, uh, my background as a medical doctor, and um, uh, my mother is a midwife. She's a retired midwife, and um, the father was a, a heading master. So, and I, so how I first joined the medical profession was uh, my mother had my I'm number seven, my mother the thirteen children she had, and uh, we used to go and assist her babysit a little was younger sibling. So so she was a midwife, and one evening I went to support her in that because they were uh, they were workers, middle income, and they were not, they could not have maids. So we used to do that work assist. Mm -hmm. So one evening I go to the dispensary to assist her in the, uh, you know, when you, my role was to, when she's in the, the, the labor suit, mm -hmm. I tend to, I mean, I'm with the, the younger, the, the breastfeeding child, and then I would do, when the, the child wakes up, I would take to her, that was the type of thing, mm -hmm. supporting her. So one, that one evening as I was there, because we used to do interns, uh, another pregnant woman came to deliver and the, uh, being a child, you know, she was like my mother praying with her. And then the next day, of course, I slept the next day, I got to pray her. They said, hey, No, don't touch her, she's dead. So that thing has shocked me. He said, Dead, why? What has killed her? And um, they said, I was young in P2 by that time, primary two. Uh, I asked them, what, why, what has killed my friend? Because she was like now a friend to me. Mm -hmm. Mother, I mean, she, she was a pregnant woman, and you know. Young child also. I have also come to look after my other sibling. Yeah. So the, my my mom now said uh, we didn't have a doctor. So in my mind, I thought maybe the doctor was a machine or something. Then I asked her, "What is the doctor?" I said, "Is someone more qualified than me?" Mm -hmm. So I said, "I will become a doctor." And to cut the whole story short, I became a doctor. But when I became a doctor, mm -hmm. uh, in the early nineties, all the doctors were going outside for good pastures. They were uh, yeah. in South yeah. Africa and yeah. what. Mm -hmm. So I took a decision to remain because, you know, my was like, if I go to South Africa, then because my childhood dream was to become a doctor to save mothers. And the, I asked my mother what killed that, exactly what it was. Then she said she had a ruptured uterus, you know, in a ruptured uterus when someone is in labor and then she is obstructed and then she has ruptures. Mm. You must be in a theater. Mm. You must take it to a theater, a woman, and there must be a doctor. If, if they, you are in a place that doesn't have um, a theater, then there should be an ambulance to take. So. I become a doctor and um, all the doctors are going outside. I said, what is the reason why doctors are going outside? It was because of low salaries, because of occupational so That was the early 90s. Yeah, the early 90s, because mm. and you would come out and already even when you had internship, they're already recruiting you. So I said I mm. cannot betray my child because that was what in my mind. So uh, during that time, we decided to form an organization. We said, what do, how do we talk for doctors? So that we remain in Uganda, we don't go outside. So that we can have our salaries improved, improve, we shall have our occupational risk handled. Because at that time I was even, uh, when I, I was, uh, we were in a theater, mm. in, in casual theater, some people came, gun shot wounds, and we didn't, we had, um, the, 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 everything was finished. We had to go, and we went to Macintosh, try to operate on that. At one time I was pierced in a, by a needle. Uh, there was no post exposure profile, so there were those type of challenges. Mm. So um, we said we should form an organization. So that thing coincided when the government wanted the representation in the parliament and the CEO of workers, and there was a debate wha who should be workers. That in 1968, the government had banned trade unions, mm. and they said only the, the people in the, in the blue collar jobs should come to trade unions. So in 1992, the government decided to open up so that they had to, to allow workers that to be represented. 1992. 92. There was a law by the NRM because they wanted the workers to be represented in the parliament. So the uh, ban on trade unions was, was lifted, lifted by, um, uh, by some act uh, mm. statute mm. because mm. it was NRC that by okay. that time. So mm. that time coincided with us in Mulago mm. saying we want to form an organization to, spoke, to speak to us. So some people came to Mulago 
and they wanted to look good as in their union. Then we said, no, but even as doctors and nurses, we've been wanting to form a union. Mm. So why do you want to join? Let us form our own. So we formed the union, and then the workers chose me to become the general secretary. So that's how we are joined to the union. Uh, Uganda Medical this? Workers Union. Okay. So we moved mm. the whole country, mm. and uh, we uh, did very you well. solicited for membership. For membership in the union, and then we were registered in 1994. Mm. So um, we were registered as a union, and that's how I became a, a general secretary. And then that year we had issues, you know, we uh, head on with government, pushing for increment of salaries. Mm. 95, we had a mm. national strike. I was arrested, mm. put in, and then uh, interdicted. And, you know, I, at that time, the, my, the federal doctors organized for me to go for master's. When I was still outside the master's, they called me. They said, uh, people are looking for you because we are having elections for members of Party 96. So I, that's how, you know, I become a trade union mm -hmm. in 94. Mm -hmm. Well, I just start then, uh, yeah, I struggle for the, the increment of salaries and all that for mm -hmm. the doctors and mm -hmm. the nurses. J just before then, you go yes, far, doctor, yes. I'm sorry to cut mm -hmm. you short. Mm -hmm. uh, kindly share with us who were among the critical people you formed this union with. Uh, that time we were, we were, myself I was key, but we ha I had two other people who were very critical. We had my brother Nyangasi, Apollo. Yeah. And then we had uh, another lady called Stefania Motonyi. Stefania Motonyi. You know, she was a nurse. The other one was a paramedic. And mm. me, uh, well, I, they used to call them paramedic, but now they are the health workers. And me, I was a doctor. So we had all the three mm. uh, professions within the, uh, the, 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 the medical sector represented. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so, so we managed to form an, um, my brother Nyangas became chairman, mm. national chairman. I became the general secretary. And then, uh, uh, my sister Mutoni became the organizing secretary because those were key mm. areas, organizing and you know. So that's how we formed the medical workers. And we were registered and then um, mm. it was one of the units you know, that grew very fast, you know. There was a hunger for improvement of health, the rights of health workers. They, they, and, and so we quickly became in, the, in part of the agenda, the government we engaged. The union became powerful. We mm. had a struggle. Remember, that time was the time when we got lunch allowance mm. uh, for the workers. We even had to push the increment of salaries and others. So, really, the union was very active. Yeah. So, that's how you can see I, 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 a medical doctor. Mm. But because of a passion, I, I could see that going outside, uh, it would not assist me in the bike of childhood. But, secondly, when I was in the country, I saw that the doctors were still going. So low salaries, and then we had the occupational health issues mm. in the double mm. We had no um, uh, equipment. We were not very good, in fact, and facilities. I remember one of the challenges I had was in the, I mean, the uh, child care, where children would die because of lack of nebulizers. And you know, you, you, are, you need a nebulizer. So it's something that you, you are put on the child if, they, if it has issues of breathing yeah, to yeah. improve the respiration. Mm. So. Mm. The, uh, so, so because of that, we formed the union. So by I, I, when I was becoming, I wanted to become a doctor, I don't have intention that I would be part of a union. But now, you are in a situation where you, you must join the union. I mean, mm. we had to form a union. Yeah, so there, was a need. there was what a need. And then mm. I formed a union. I didn't know it would be so challenging. You know, already we, we took on government. Yeah. Uh, then I'm arrested, you put mm. in, interdicted. You know, it was things that were, and then, my colleagues say, oh, what do we do? This doctor is now, because you see when you're interdicted, mm -hmm. you are paid salary a half and you're not going to work. Yeah. So they said, I think, for, since he has been fighting for us, there were some doctors outside. Mm -hmm. To be productive uh, for him, during this time when he's outside, he can go for master's. Then as I'm for master's, before he completes, I get a, uh, you know, that doesn't we need to have calls, we need to have mobile phones, but mm -hmm. we used to, mm -hmm. to communicate mm -hmm. through Fax, uh, fax, I mean, yeah. uh, fax and then internet, I mm. mean email. Email, yeah. So they sent an email from the Uganda Medical Workers. You know what, the, the person whom I had left acting was called Dr. Mondo. He's now a, 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 a senior cardiologist, a consultant cardiologist mm. at Mulago. Mm. He sends an email and says, you must come back within 10 days. I said, how? You know, it was complicated, but uh, they said, if you don't come in 10 days, you're going to have betrayed us because there's going to be an electoral college for election of workers and everyone is saying a, this doctor has been fighting for workers mm -hmm. uh, we want him to be elected to represent us and it was wow what should i do so i came back uh, you know when you're going for masters you have a return air ticket yeah you they give you a, a ticket to go and come back mm -hmm. sponsor so i did the, i used the word of return mm -hmm. yeah and i come back mm -hmm. uh you reached uh, of course i was again late uh, people are saying no but we are late already we have made up our mind mm -hmm. 
I said, now what should I do? I already used the time ticket, you know, how it but good enough, I was elected. Yeah, that's how you end up. So that's how you can see, mm. come medical doctor, my child, but in the process, because when I say I become a trade union, but again, I end up parliament. You see, the, the, all these were things that mm. were f too fast for me because I, had, I, I never had thought I would become a member so of parliament. Which, which yes. year was this when you became a member uh, of parliament? I became a member of parliament in 1996. 1996. Uh, you know, because we had the, the major strike was 95. And then 95, that's when I go to, I, I went to Austria for masters. And then along the way, I come back in 96, when they called me and I came back. To, so to when you became the member of parliament, yes. what was the status of the union you formed and what was your position there? The secretary general, you're the secretary of the you union. This yeah, yeah, you're the secretary, yeah, you're the secretary, that's right, yeah. Uh, now, from, uh, now I want you to take me to the, uh, your union joining COFTA? Now, um, when we formed the Uganda Medical Workers Union, you remember I told you the background that uh, between 19, uh, 1968 mm, to 1992. 1992, the government had banned civil, I mean, the people with um, uh, white, what I say, white collar jobs, professions from joining the union. Mm. So that statute, what it was called 1992, trade union, miscellaneous amendment statute. Oh, they say actually they say, say they opened the, 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 the space for our workers union unions including the teachers bank of uganda medical and all that that's what they said mm. so that space which had been opened brought in professionals like medical doctors and whatever so, so when i joined the, uh, the, the we joined this union that time it was union number 17 they already about 16 other unions yeah, yeah, yeah. uh we had some challenges where uh, we, we, we become members of the National Council of Trade Unions and by that time uh, the Amin Decree in 1974 had banned all other umbrella organizations and they, uh, they established like a state or sort of like any that should be on the one umbrella mm. that is uh, what was called National Organization of Trade Union, which is up uh, which, is, which is up to now mm. so we had issues in terms of uh, governance at that time mm. I am not saying it's the same situation right now but mm. we had the issues where we thought we could have some transformation mm. and reform. But uh, that this led to a lot of conf sort of challenges and intrigue and fighting until we said, since we have a certain school of thought, but other people think the, the status quo is okay, why can't we form our center? So that the people who believe the way we want to can join this one, and the ones who believe the other can remain. So that we, we can, you know, we can all work together. You know, they, you can have two centers with this thinking. Those are, so we had a lot of things. Training would become voluntary. Voluntary. So we, we we were about five unions. My, the Uganda Medical Workers Union. We had another union called Uganda Government. No, that time it was civil service. Uganda civil service. Union. Then it was we had the hotels union. We had another one. I think it was um, uh, Uganda Printers Union. Mm. Uh, and I think the Union, we formed the COFTU, the Central Organization of Free Trade Unions. Now, mm. when we formed this COFTU, they say they cannot register us because the Trade Union Decree of 1974 did not allow another alternative centre. Mm. But the 1995 Constitution had allowed freedom of association uh, in, the, in the Article 40. Mm. So uh, we went to the Constitutional Court. Uh, you have heard of a case called Dr. Sam Yomoki and others. Versus the attorney general, I think it was petition number eight of two zero four. So we got the constitutional court, and the government had refused to recognize us. So when we went to the constitutional court in two zero four, uh, in two zero five, I think that was twenty fourth of June, we had a ruling. The, the constitutional court was very fast because you see, we went in two zero four, and already in two zero five, we were having a ruling in about one year. It's not like because I've seen a lot of this time the constitutional courts that have remained for a long time, but that time it was fast. So they ruled and the, the court granted us uh, that it, our, it, was, it was unconstitutional for you to have only one center. Uh, so they ruled, the court, court ruled that workers, they, you can only come together if you so like as one center, but you have the freedom to form another center. So that's why now COFT was now sort of like recognized by the Constitutional Court. And then uh, that, around that time, that was in 2005, in 2006 we had also amendment of the, the, the labor you know the, the trade union decree that had become obsolete of because the, a lot of sections of it had been struck down by the constitutional court so that's when we have the new labor unions act which is of two zero which is which subsists up to now 
In that new, in the, that Labor Unions Act, uh, Section 62 provided that national, uh, not to that national, national government of trade unions, which was existing, which was had been established by decrees 1974, mm. will remain into existence. Mm. Uh, and then it, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, Section 62, three, provided that the central organization of free trade union, which was in existence at the commencement of this act, shall remain in force. I mean, shall be deemed as registered. So that in Europe uh, recognized two national centers, COFTA and NOTU. Mm -hmm. So that's how uh, the, the, the history formed the COFTA, when the constitutional court, and then it, 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 later on the law is amended and the two centers are put in the law. So that's why we have now two national centers in Uganda. Okay. So how was the governance? Um, Kofto, how was the governance there politically? No, the governance of Kofto, first of all, uh, there were several additional things that as a value that we added that were different from the other centre. One, we, uh, apart from having national unions uh, in terms of the structures, we also brought what was called local structures at district level. Because we realized that uh, uh, if you are having national organizing workers only, sometimes there are a lot of workers in farms and all that, uh, teachers and all, who are in, in up country. In, so we had what are called district structures. But we also noted that there are a lot of other workers who are in the informal economy because uh, about 70% of the workers are in the informal economy, that's the market vendors, the cycles and drivers. So in our course, we recognize the, 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 that we, the members of the union will not, not only be employer-employee relationship, but we can also bring in former workers like the self-employed and others. So, so that was one addition that, we, that was being provided in the, in, the, in, the, in the other center. And then we also pro provided something that brought in the issue of um, additional um, sort of like uh, uh, services and benefits like, for instance, having legal aid uh, at the national center and many other programs, so, which was also an, an addition. So uh, now in terms of governance, we had what is called the Congress. The Congress has represented from the affiliate unions. Mm. And then uh, we have, and this Congress, the, 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 the actually supposed to be called the uh, annual delegates conference, but every five years called the Congress, which elects leaders. And you have the representatives from the unions, but also from the, the, the district structures. That's the Congress. Then under that, you have what is called the Central Executive Council. Central Executive Council is um, a body that runs in between the Congresses. When the Congress, because the, the Congress is like an annual delegates conference, five years called the Congress, so which runs once a year, and then five years Congress. So the the, the SEC comes into seat twice a year, and the ordinary so you, before you, if you you don't have a Congress. Then um, you, yes. Oh, me? Eh, yeah. okay. Yeah. This way. So, um, so um, the Congress uh, say what is called the Six, Central Access Council about twice a year, but yes, sometimes yeah. we sit more depending on the situation. Mm. But it's supposed to be to sit by annually, mm. and that one has representative from unions. Uh, the representation is that you have. Um, uh, four by, by affiliated union. That is the national chairman of the union, the secretary general, general secretary, mm. and we have the um, uh, woman leader and the treasurer. These four, national four. Chairman, secretary, secretary, woman leader, leader, and treasurer. Mm. Those are four mm. of every union. Mm. But you also have the executive board that has been elected by the Congress every five years, and the executive board has the secretary general. It has, the, I mean, the national the chairman general. Two vice chairman generals, treasurer general, vice treasurer general, secretary general, two deputy secretary generals, um, and it has other members of the of the executive, mm. and then uh, it has also um, members. Uh, we uh, during when every year and every five years you have what are called the apart from the Congress or so national conference, you also have a national conference for women. So they also elect their women committee. So the chairperson is also a member of the of the SEC. Mm. And also a, a, a younger workers leader who is elected by the workers conference, younger people workers conference. We have the uh, what are called the former workers structure mm. and all that. So this form the SEC. Now under SEC, you have now the executive committee, which I've already talked about. Is also also the other name is the executive board, which is elected every five years. Said we had the 
Congress, five mm. years, and uh, annually, that, co that is called the annual delegates conference of the representative of unions. And then under it, we have the Central Executive Council. Mm. And then under that, we had the Executive Committee Board, which is elected at the Congress. And then, and then the, the SEC, which is, uh, which is above, this is um, representative. And then under the Executive Committee, we have the Secretary. The Secretary is now the headquarters. Uh, where we have the secretary general as the head and then the deputy secretary generals and then we have leaders, I mean the other employees. Uh, so basically those are the structures of COF2. Uh, and then of course we have the Women Congress, uh, which is like women conference, which is national, I mean for women leaders, from unions, we have the youth, younger workers, mm -hmm. then we have the informal economy, and then the workers with disabilities. We, just to make sure that they, we also have representation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you describe your um, service under COFTO, even when you are representing workers in parliament? Yeah, I think uh, our service, as I said, brought in a new change because it was during the time uh, that COFTO now had become legalized in 2000 that we tried to expand even the membership of unions to bring on board the informal economy. We are yes. the ones who brought in the market vendors. Yes, you said about that. Uh, we are the ones who brought the drivers. And then also we, 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 we made sure that the right to organize extends to even the informal economy. Who don't now also participate, because you, you know that, the, for instance, the Parliamentary Elections Act, uh, special interest groups, you find the, in terms of the workers, MPs, the labor unions, which, which elect. So it means that now we are having a, including a market vendor that participate in the election of workers and peace through their structures, uh, through their union. And then we also had, as I told you, we had the certain what we call the flagship programs. We had the um, uh, Lego Aid. Uh, Lego Aid was, uh, uh, you used to hear an organization called the Feeder for Women. Yeah, she's so, uh, for, yeah, so we, so we, we this was, was like a, a feeder for workers. So it mm. was like what is called Lego Aid for workers. So mm. we could give Lego services to workers who are dismissed and all that. That's what we have been doing. And then we had the additional uh, sort of uh, uh, programs that came on board uh, to support workers. So in my view, we uh, came into what we call the used our leverages as the workers and the structures of workers to uh, sort of give synergistic uh, a synergy to the workers movement where we whatever not was doing we came in and supported them so that we started the, like add, added the value mm. we, we, we could do exactly what not was doing because mm. we also had a federation mm. our former center but we also tried to innovate mm. and come up with the new uh, things that we thought would fill in the gap uh, in terms of workers so how are you facilitating your services now in terms of facilitation uh the first of all the office has contributed because the law provides that uh, all offices must contribute uh, if yes. you're a member of a union you contribute a certain percentage to the union and then the union t is supposed to contribute 10 percent of that to the center so we have the money that comes from the workers through the unions and all that but also we have certain grants and support from the like, international labor organization. We also have these uh, relations with bilateral centers, like we have relations with the, inter the, the what is called the All China Confederation of Trade Unions. That is the, the big center that in the United States Chinese workers. Mm. Uh, we have also other with other union other centers. So that's how we are support. And then we also have support from other groups. Uh, we also uh, get supports from the NS National Association Fund. Uh, in terms of what is called co social, co co social responsibility. So we have uh, different uh, supports from various uh, agencies in terms of, uh, but the main support which is supposed to be the core is from contributions of the workers mm. through their unions. So currently how many unions are registered under the umbrella of COFTO? Uh, we have 11, 11. Uh, but we have another 10 that have contention, you know, uh, they are under COFTO but uh, some of the leaders decided to say they are for, you know, sort of like uh, they are facing and doing the other center and we have not resolved that matter. So we have a balance of about 10 that, in that they are in the middle there. You count them this side and the other side, but the ones that have no quotations are, they are 11. Uh, so that's the type of membership. How do, you, how, how do you leave parliament? Uh, parliament, you know, I served in parliament for 25 years. Yeah. And uh, in the current elections, I was not elected. 
so um, I sort of like uh, made a secretary general because at that time I used to be secretary general but also member of parliament. But now this time uh, I'm full. I don't have uh, apart from uh, at one stage the the workers decided to say. Uh, why can't we represent them in the National Social Fund Board? Because the board also of the nurses is also nominated by the centers. We have two from North and two from Koftu. Mm. So uh, I was requested uh, to be part of the, the membership of the NSSF. So, Doctor, when you said you were in Parliament for 25 years, yes, uh, I read somewhere and you dubbed or you deemed the previous elections irregular but these people were electing you for 25 years why oh, is, why is it no, that yeah, now actually that's important you see you know sometimes when you are part of an organization remember we, i used to be a member of not two and then we noted that there were some sort of like gaps uh that we needed to, re to redress now uh in the before uh, i we formed the cof two uh, we had, for instance, uh, out of the number of workers, which are about, like right now, the number is four, five, 15 million, the part are called the active labor force, 70% of that was in the informal economy. So you do find that uh, uh, as it organized labor, we are only from the, from the employees, mm -hmm. the formal sector. So we were like representing a smaller section and, and of the workers, because others were in the informal economy, they are not part of the union. Secondly, even among the union, we would find that some of the workers were not, were, had not joined the union. So you'd find that a very small section of workers were unionized. Even when we said we should expand now to the informal economy, you find that the unions were open, like the drivers, cyclists and drivers, the market vendors and artists in general. But these unions uh, have had the workers who have joined, but they are not many. So I saw, uh, for the, when I had been playing first one and two times, I saw that they were already having small, few people coming to the electoral college. Like, for instance, we would have each union sending 10. So you end up uh, having, some, initially we had like a 12, 12, 17 unions. So we are like 170 people from the, not, the north, so there were about 180. Uh, then some new unions came in. So by the time we were having the last election, there were about 30, uh, about 45 unions with two nationals. So we are having like uh, something like 460 representatives coming to, vote, to join. But this uh, representation had issues. One is that there used to be contention because you are having 10 people. You know, most of the unions have more 20 members of the lake. And they are representing like teachers, they have received 120 or 300, 200,000. Market vendors, they are talking about a membership about 600,000 and the membership almost even one to two million, including the drivers. So we had issues where, uh, and then there were challenges where uh, who should go, who should be the team mm -hmm. to go and represent. So there used to be challenges. Sometimes you find it, people are saying they have been left out, and it, there was a very compli uh, compli the difficulty with general secretaries on whom to nominate. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Then number two, the electoral colleges are, we are sort of prone to manipulation and, and you know, sort of like uh, patronage. Mm -hmm. So by the time you are having an election, because you are representing 15 million, Mm. Uh, the 500 people sometimes are given money and now in terms of election you are not sure that the outcome is because of the popular vote that's number two and then number three when you say given money you know you know you know you see you know what how pattern they, how pattern your works you know mm. mps come and they give handouts mm -hmm. handouts handouts mm. to people handouts to people and so in the process and they, they might they don't they don't need to open it's a, it's a silent thing but it is it, 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 someone can use money if you have maybe 100 million, 200 to come and make and they, they vote you. So you find that the, the person elected might not necessarily be the best, but because of money. That, that, that's, that's one of the weaknesses. But then the, 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 last, the third point also is that mm. if you are having 15 million members, you cannot say that 500 are really, and who are coming from organized because of that conscription, the majority of the workers are not in the unions. You have a challenge where some people went to the constitutional court and then they said we should bring in what are called non-unionized. So in the last election we had the unionized and non-unionized. But we had the challenge in the sense that so the mm. five million are the non-unionized. No, the numbers. First of all, let us give you the numbers. You find that fifteen million are all the workers. Mm. Out of that fifteen million, a percentage of them are unionized. If you look at the statistics, mm. but uh, someone went to the constitutional you know, court sometime ago, and the constitutional court ruled and they said that uh, the presidential parliament is not by only unionized.
but also also run unionized. To the extent that even when I was a member of parliament and all of us were talking for all workers, we were not talking for unionized. But if you are talking for all workers and you are not you are not having the non unionized in, in getting involved in the election, you have a challenge that mm. um, uh, your sort of like uh, ownership and legitimacy can be questionable. So uh, yes, members were electing me, were representing workers, but I could see these things that yes, yes, we are. But uh, what is about what about the other? Because there are a lot of workers. In fact, like yesterday, I was looking at the you know we have this um, it's called I think Super Souls or whatever you, you, you women. You know there was a program which mm. was running a bucket mm. vendor. Yeah, yeah. And actually, I said I even called the producer. Mm. And I told her to send that name so that we can try to see if we can award her. Because you see, she was talking about very great things she did. Okay. Yes, but now good. those are not unionized. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I saw that if we are to handle the plight of workers, even the trade unions talk for all workers, why can't we open space? And then we have, uh, because the non unionized, when they are coming to elect, they, they go and elect them at the sub county, then they come to the district level. I mean, it's county, then district level, then they come to the region. So you find that each union sends 10, 10 members, a whole region. So he said, no, why do we categorize unionized and non-unionized? Why can't we have one general or workers elect? Mm. And then we can um, have a uh, register of all workers. I mean, if I'm a member and I want to register to be a member, like you're in UBC, uh, you might find that actually maybe you're not a member of union, I don't know. So you're, you're supposed to be a member of either media union or journalist union. Mm -hmm. So the question would be, how do we elect? And for you, are not participated. But if you can say, let the electoral commission have it's just of all workers, you're in UBS and wherever. Uh, and those workers, uh, when they, they day for election, when I go for election for the member of parliament for the president, I can also elect for mm -hmm. my um, workers mm -hmm. in, in my local place. Because mm -hmm. they will be registered, just like they will do with women. Mm -hmm. Women, you know, you register for your IMOP. Yes. For, uh, in this particular for, 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 for BBMP, for this. Mm -hmm. Then also you also register MP for for women mm. present but then you can also say if I, if we work and you're there you can also go play just for a work mm. so we can even decide to say for these workers maybe MPs maybe we, can, we do it at regional level so that we have workers for the eastern workers so that was the thinking and uh we had we had all these complications and complaints so we, uh, we i decided as a leader to take that mantle you know because if i've been a leader of workers for 25 years in parliament but also have been even in more years as a trade union there are some things you think that should be before and you say why can't we open up since we are trade union mm. and then the, the, the other point which was also i was seeing as a, a very complication uh, something complicated is that because elections are being trade, held in trade unions you, there is a lot of politicking uh, if you, for instance, right now you say you are going calling workers for a meeting or for uh, like for instance industrial action, maybe you are struggling for some maybe something, there will be no much action and activity. But during the time of election, there is a lot of activity. People are around you know everywhere, politicking. So, trade union is where the issue of politics was overtaking the the, 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 the what are called the traditional laws of trade union because the trade union is supposed to represent workers in a lot of not necessarily in parliament, but you could see. A parliament was becoming a, a, a sort of a, a, an area which was trying to like hijack mm. trade union into politics. So my thinking, uh, my judgment was that if you uh, remove this type of mandate to all the workers, mm. you will now remove this complication of politicking from the trade union. Because right now you could say a lot of uh, people fighting each other. Me, you are not my. I was. I stood as a member of parliament. You really support me now. You are general secretary. Mm. So after election, sometimes you find even the MPs would support. Uh, would make a leader to be removed from a general secretary because mm. I've won as a member of parliament. But you, you are not my campaign manager, and the person you are campaign manager has not has lost. Mm. So mm. it was bringing a lot of uh, activity that will bring this unit. So in my thinking, uh, you know, when you, you the, older, the older you become, the, the, sometimes you have some contribution. Yeah, then I yeah. said, why can't we go to the constitutional court and we engage on this matter? And then whatever, if for instance the court rules that you no, know, the, the other method is good or this one is good uh, as a contribution for the labor movement, that, that's the that's why I took that, that direction mm. uh, to go to the consular court to sort of like have um, a discussion. But in my in any case, even if this matter succeeded uh, to show that it was a, a public good, uh, I, I will not even stand because I, I for me my my sort of. Uh, uh, membership in parliament i think i've done my part in 24 mm. years mm. 25 years five times 25 so years. so i thought as a contribution 
because when we were in five, that was always a question mark. I would say, but we were being elected by 500. So even when you would go, uh, because I came from Uganda Medical Workers Union, uh, which was national, I also COFT has national. So, so when you are moving, you go to places, you are seeing workers suffering up country, but when you ask them, they even don't know uh, who is our, our member of family, they are five, who are you? And then uh, you ask them, well, how, when were you elected? How do we elect? So you, I would see, I, had, I, I, I would be guilty. Mm. I'm a member of parliament by 500 people, but I'm talking for 15 million. And we are five of us. So I thought uh, we engage. You know, because you see, it's not a must. I mean, it's not 100%, but it succeed or not. If it doesn't succeed, then we shall have said, no, we, this is an engagement mm. which we have had. Mm. And it may be the direction of, according to the judiciary, mm. uh, this is the best direction. I would think that it will, be, it will resolve that riddle, which okay. was, which was uh, you know, perturbing us in the country. Okay. And among the, the, but, the, the, uh, the, the, the workers for that time. Still about the Uganda Medical Workers Union. Yes. When yes. do you leave this union? In, in the Uganda Medical Workers Union, um, you know, I left Uganda Medical Workers Union in, um, was it 2008 or something? I, I used to be a general secretary of the union from the onset. Yes. In 2003, you know, I, I would say something that you might not believe, because I don't know your faith. Uh, I, you know, I, there's way God talks to people. So in 2003, uh, I, God talked to me in an audible voice. You know, I was in church praying in the overnight, you know, I go for overnight prayers. And then I had someone, a voice telling me, you had leave, a voice. leave. Yeah. And, and I, I, I looked around, there was no one. So I believed that God did not want me to continue that union. Because and that's the same time we, we, have, we had formed the COFT. And I become secretary general. And also the law uh, does not allow you to become, to be general secretary of, uh, of a union and also secretary general. So it was like, God was, because I was like, mm. what people wanted me to be secretary general. But I, this union is so dear to me. How do I, so it was like, God was outside, no, leave this one and be a secretary general. So uh, we had now that type of situation from 2008 to about 2008. There was a battle within the union uh, I want to leave, but the leaders were holding upon me. So mm. we had a situation where it was, there was we, didn't have, we didn't have a clear leadership because it was like uh, there was no clear general secretary had left, but again they were clinging on to me. So uh, sometime I, I can't get the years. Uh, the, uh, my brother, brother Sanya, who used to be national chairman, because we had the, 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 our chairman who used to be national chairman, um, uh, brother Nyangas had issues and he was imprisoned. Mm. So uh, brother yeah, Sanya became the vice and then was, because he was actually took over as chair. Mm. So somehow uh, the, we had certain situation in the union and I think sort of like mobilization uh, after campaigns and all that. A lot of, so for me, uh, I let go and, and, and my brother uh, took over secretary general or general secretary. And then around that same time, because of certain political issues, I think whatever they also say, they are also now the affiliate from my union. And you see, I had already nasty them. But unfortunately, also the another thing that happened during that period, we had a breakdown where the nurses union also came up. So even when I was a general secretary of the medical, I used to have a challenge because they are all my, like I would be my children. And the medical workers union said, why did they, why did they break off? And they would, and they would go in the uh, hospital and people, I was like their father. Mm. But other, and then sometimes you find a, a, a nurse is both in the medical. And so, I, so by the time I left medical union, I was, it was like a, a relief because... Was, was the nurses union also registered with COFTO? No, the nurses union had, was independent. In it was now, it had joined the NOTU. Okay. Yeah, so we had that type of situation. And we have nurses union. Mm. And I'm um, the general secretary of medical. So, so by the time... Uh, and you are going to hospital, you are supposed to talk for medical, but even the nurses union, you find these are your people. And you are the, they are the ones that they believe in you because mm. you have fought for them and they mm. are like your children. So mm. by the time we, I formed the COFTA, I mean by the time I took a decision that I should now concentrate on the Secretary General of COFTA, and it was like a relief because now I had been promoted above. You know, you know, you know it was like um, uh, the unions and uh, as, because we, they are like now our affiliates. And then the other point I also understood it was not a big question where the union is, whether it is in NOTU or mm. it is in COFTU. Oh, that was my thinking, because mm. even if I'm a secretary general of COFTU, mm. uh, you find that there are about uh, several unions, the major, actually many, in the NOTU, wh whom I had participated in information. So for me, I didn't look at uh, that difference at the COFTU or not. For me, it was not an issue, because whether you're in COFTU or not would represent you. Mm. But I look at these centers as vehicles, platforms for national representation. And for me, like when you look at, for instance, the Lego 8, 
we from Kofu, we handle even the case even the people who are coming from Noto and the people who are even not in unionized so for me my mindset was like i was not i was not having that type of thinking that if i'm a secretary of Kofu, i don't handle Noto. In many cases we would have leaders and issues that would arise from a union that is under Noto, and they invite me to go and, live and sort of assist them like in the grassroots in, in the, you will find sometimes the issues in the for instance we, are, we used to have issues in the, in the, in the building union mm. in the cement factory of of of, of terror and they would always come i would go with my brother Oroka. now this is the union under Noto, but i would go there and sort of like assist them so, so doctor, uh, yeah yeah uh what was the legality or the legal position mm. of you mm. being a leader mm. under Koftu, yes. but when you are, you, no, you don't belong to any union. Yes. No, you see the law provides, first of all, uh, my legal status, uh, when I decided not to be a member of the union, first of all, I'm a, a lifetime member of, 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 of medical, mm. because I'm a founder. So even okay. if they ask, union, they said I'm a member, but the constitution provides provide that. that I'm a member, so I still remember a member, but also, when I joined, when COF2 um, medical left, being a union leader and being, I, I also joined, and I am part of another union under COF2. Uh, I might not give you the details. Mm. But on top of that, the constitution provides, the law, the Labor Unions Act provides that a sector region and treasure does, do not necessarily need to be members of a union. Okay. So in other words, we can decide, you can come, you can decide to come, even if you are not a member of the union, you can decide to be a, a secretary general of COF2, so long as you, you're a trade union with experience, uh, and you, you come to election, and you work. Mm. You can, so so uh, the law protected me that if you, uh, even in NOTU, uh, you, you, for instance, you, uh, my brother, Werike was the member of NOTU, he, was not, he used to be a general secretary, but he was not a now a general secretary. So you, can, you are capable of being um, a secretary general, even a general secretary of a union, even if you are not part of that union. So legally, uh, whether I, I because the medical union went the other side, but even if uh, even if I had joined another union within Koftu because I'm a member of a, a union within Koftu, but it was it was, it was not a requirement. Mm. Uh, I just wanted to have a belonging, but in terms of the because I also part, I, I'm involved in many other things, farming and all that uh, and whatever. So uh, yeah, so and also we have other unions in, in Koftu which also accommodate me, but. I, I, I knew that in terms of the law, mm. the Secretary General does not necessarily need to be a member of a union. Mm. And also, there the are two positions which are protected the Secretary General and the Treasurer mm. of a union or, or Treasurer General. Okay. So, uh, in terms of legality, uh, even if I don't, even if I, I had chosen not to be a member of any union in COFTU, still it was no, no problem because Secretary General, according to the Labor Unions Act, so must be, a, a, does not necessarily need to be a member of a union. Before we dwell, into the NSSF report. Yes, yes. Uh, what are the circumstances surrounding your impeachment? Impeachment where? And uh, from Kofto. No, there is no impeachment. You see, as I told you, I explained to you that uh, in terms of SEC, because SEC is, is the one which admits between when there is no national conference or what the conference, every SEC is composed of uh, four representatives of unions. So in COF, since we have 11 unions, it means that the SEC is composed of four representatives, the general secretary of a union, national chairman, woman leader, and treasurer. So we have, it means that if you have a SEC, you must have um, uh, 44 members plus the executive board. So maybe about 50, because some of the members double their general secretary, but also, also in the executive committee. Now, what happened of recent, uh, we had some three unions out of the 11. That is the artisans of my brother Wanyama. We had uh, this one of the science teachers of my brother alone and Mugaika. And we had another one of Keno. That's uh, so you serve those three. They decided to claim that they are working with someone who was also saying that he was a chairman general because he had he contested and had a petition. And then they said they are holding a, a sick. Mm. Now, that was, of course, was illegal in the sense that one, Three unions cannot form because out of seven, after of eleven, if you are feeling them, it means they are remaining eight. Mm. So the eight, we, we even continue our meetings and we even have dissolution. So you cannot have three unions, and you because and then you bring all your national the the neck members of the three unions because you want to have numbers that you cannot become a sec of coffee because the sec of coffee must have even a quorum. So if, if you are three unions and bring your sec, I mean you bring members of the neck. But out of those members, only the four who are, who are ordinarily members of SEC, the other side. So four uh, times the 
three that is like a 12. Now you cannot yourself call a meeting and say that you are trying, first of all, the membership, that would not be a membership for sake. But secondly, all meetings of a center are called by the Secretary General. So if I've not called the meeting, then you, that your meeting is illegal. Then number three, according to the Labor Unions Act, all members who are not subscribing, are not, they cannot participate in the election. Now, unfortunately, these three unions, they are being sort of raising issues, and they, they stopped subscribing. For, I don't know what, for what reason. So even they are not members, because some of them are not, they are not supposed for over a year, some others two years. So even if, uh, even if we, um, even the 12, who are supposed to be members of the say cannot participate in our election. In fact, when they have been coming to our meetings, they have been not electing. I mean, you are like, they are attending, but if, if you want to do a strict legal procedure, you put them in attendance, and you even put into, in the minutes that we had the members from this one who have attended, but because they are not supposed to be there, they, they are not voting. So even when they are in a meeting, so it, it, they don't, they, they don't uh, throw out your decisions that there were some members who attended illegally, they were, we are not counting them. Mm -hmm. So, those are the members who purported that they were having a sake to remove me. So, so there no, was no impeachment because the, whatever I was doing was the nullity. It was just so an the illegal. meeting was illegal. Illegal. The participants were, were illegal. illegal. And even the, and then the other circumstances also, which cost it also, which is also questionable. Mm. They were like being hired because what happened was that um, in this NSSF, the current. Uh, dynamics uh, I was like played a key role in terms of trying to because as a member of the board we had been having issues and we decided that we should have investigation and th this thing was polarized a certain well, other members had a school of thought that we should not do investigations yeah. others had a school of thought that we should do investigation but appoint the MOD others like me had in, had the school of thought that we should first of all investigate before we really appoint now this thing brought a lot of aspects to the extent that uh, when we had the final meeting with the president, in that meeting I was the only board member who said we should do, go for investigation, and the president agreed with me. Now, when we came out, this thing had brought a lot of unhappiness, and um, that's when, you remember, this meeting with the president was, uh, was in December. Second, remember, it was around Christmas time, the first when there was a lot of uh, narrative, you know, mm. uh, in terms mm. of uh, in the place, and, you know, so the info so information started leaking out, and then the issue was, uh, the, there was a thinking that myself and the minister, who is the current minister, current minister for um, for labour, and also that we are having a, a conspiracy to to appoint him, uh, the current MOD, the acting. Yeah. So there was that thinking. So there was a lot of mobilisation against us, myself. You know, trying to talk about many many things. You have seen how they even the matter of the six billion has missed also spin, um, and also uh, many many things trying to demonizing me, trying to black me. So that was the type of thing. So because of that, we also discovered that these people, the ones who I said they had that the meeting they called sake, mm. they're also being funded by certain forces within this type of NSF to make sure that they can blackmail me so that I look as if I don't have a constituency. So that my activities in the NSSF board are like a, uh, put a question mark on them because if you are a member of the board and your members are calling you, mm. that's why that's why you find that that thing was highly funded, that small meeting, mm. even in terms of the uh, the publicity, you know, the terms of media like you and others, you don't mm. even sure that you, you uh, there was a lot of uh, sort of funding and all that to make sure that there's a lot of um, uh, mobilization that even the social media trying to say Dr. Lemuk is no longer what, but mm. it was real that type of thing, which was, for me I think it was the um, uh, anti-workers, because if we are pushing for uh, you saw what the, the way the results have come out of the NSF board in, in, in the first case. So if I'm uh, saying that should be investigations and then other people trying to mobilize to, 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 to make me look uh, as if my concerns are against me, I, that is no, I have no moral assault and what, mm. that becomes really, uh, 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 what I, 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 maybe, I don't want to use the word mercenary because <laughs> so these are brothers, but who, the, only reason, the only challenge they, they have is that they, are not, they have not subscribed, mm. two is that they are, they are out of coffee, they are only about three unions. Mm. Um, even when you, even the law says, even if, if the secretary general has not called a meeting, yes, that's the third. You, 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 you can solicit, but mm. solicit votes you must have two, must be two thirds of the members. Mm. If of which uh, they were not members. They were not, yeah, they are not members. But second, if they are members, mm. they were not, they were not two thirds. Mm. You see, they, so they had all, you, you, so first of all, they are not members. So mm. they, are, they cannot even, they are zero members. But secondly, mm. even if they are members, two, two, two 
three unions out of 11 cannot be two thirds. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so you can see that they, from all angles, there is a problem. But also the other, the, the worst part of it is that even when we called the meeting in SEC, we invited them because they were saying Dr. Liam has not called SEC to explain issues. We invited and they refused to come. So you find, and then they are being funded. So you find that mm. from all angles, it's like, a, maybe the word I will use, it may be a Kiganda word into Kulemesa. Mm. And we can mm. let, it, let us try to spin the whole thing, mm. use the cough too, and try to get people, mm. use them, and then they, they said, your doctor has been thrown out, and then it is highly uh, publicized. Okay. Yeah, that so, was the type of scheme, so yes. Now, doctor, uh, yes. Now we want <laughs> <laughs> it is quite interesting indeed. Yes, yes. But now, yeah. uh, when we were starting, mm. you said SEC uh, provided that it would sit twice annually. Yes. Uh, has this been achieved all along for the past year? Actually, for the past year, SEC has been sitting sometimes six times. We have all the minutes. Mm. SEC has been sitting more than... Uh, I, I, don't have, I don't have a year where we sat less than six times. Yes, because we have been sitting almost sometimes two months, sometimes in a month. Like uh, if you look at the, the like uh, for instance, there is that question about uh, nomination to the, f the, to to the, the board. To the board of NSC. In NSC, that's we, what we, we, we had a meeting of the SEC this meeting was, I think, about 27. We had the executive board. We, what we always do, we have the executive board and then the SEC. Because we, we, the way the, the, the whole procedure of the union is, you get uh, the main uh, document for this case is what is called the Secretary General's report. But the Secretary General's report comes from the Secretariat. So you, are, you con 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 consolidate all the issues. Then you take them to the executive board, they are discussed, and then you take them to the Secretary Executive Council. Mm. So in the year 2021, we had several meetings of SEC maybe three or four before and then we had the and, and because sex sits uh twice a year we had the ordinary meeting because we have what are called emergency so we had an ordinary meeting in uh july that was on uh, 27th of july and we even have the minutes for that mm. we had this uh, executive board on 26 and 27 we had a, a sec mm. now during that period we the membership of the board was expiring in august mm -hmm. of that year mm. So, SEC, uh, before that, about uh, two weeks earlier, the, uh, the, 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 the chairman general at that time uh, uh, alerted the secretary that Which board was expiring? The NSF the board. NSF board. Uh -huh. yeah. So, we said now, we see the SEC is twice a year. We have sat about three, four times this year, and this is almost will be the last time in the July. Mm. Why can't the, we... The ordinary meeting. Yeah, the ordinary meeting. Mm. So, and, see, and the, the nominations are going to... Be, the, we, we need, we are need the, 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 the board of the NSF is expiring in end of August. So, like in the month's time, the board... So, we, so, a process was started to say why can't we have our members nominated. And the, our nomination, this was the um, fifth time we had we been nominating. The, we nominated in the eighth board, ninth board, tenth. Now, this was the eleventh. No, 12. So we had nominated 8th, 9th, 10th. So this was mm. number, the number 5. Because mm. we started nominating from the 8th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th. Mm. So we had already nominated the same method. Mm. And I was the one who was submitting the names as secretary. Mm. Because mm. the procedure that you meet, uh, the mm. name come from the secretariat. People are involved. We, we do vetting and verification because in terms of representation to the board, you, you know, it's not by democracy. Because there is democracy fine, but also there must be the right people. The Uber and others, there must be people with the right skill in terms of experience and, and qualification. So, uh, you cannot, for instance, if you don't have the background of finance and also you don't have certain qualification, you cannot just come and say we elect and we just elect. Like so, just like a parliament, the people who, are, who go for election must have an equivalent of, of senior six. I mean, yeah. there should be standard. Yes. So, we had that standard. So, the secretary, first of all, uh, tries to vote and we get the right person. So, in that sake, of 27th, the executive committee had July 27th, we had about five people. We had uh, some members of the board who had been there uh, and others, and we had about five of us. Uh, and for me, uh, because I had been a member of parliament and had been and played a big inst uh, sort of uh, um, uh, contribution in terms of the, the, the new act, and you know, the midterm and all that. Mm. Some colleagues said that. Um, why can't you represent us on the NSF board? And initially, I thought it was a demotion because in the past, people had been like a, my colleague, colleagues who attended the meeting. To, uh, yeah, yeah. No, before the meeting. Before the meeting. Uh, people used to, he told me that uh, you are a member of the, of the board. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, uh, Hodari Warike said, I, I, most of them, 
members of parliament had been sometimes in the NS and then they come to parliament. Now for me, I was saying I've been in parliament. And you demote me, even if I have not gone to parliament, do I have to be in this? Day? So I remember my brother, who was the secretary general of the other side, mm, not to, not to. he said he has been on the board. But now, because he's a member of parliament in the local constituency, there's no way he can go back in the board. So he came and begged me and said, you know, we needed someone senior in that board. And you have the... So he said, but I thought about this sort of thing. And then I said, OK, it's OK. I consulted my chairman. And then he said, maybe it is fine. How long did it take you to think about this? Maybe two or three weeks. Two or three weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So finally, when the ordinary meeting came, mm -hmm. the so consulate had been vetted. And the, uh, we had about five people who could qualify from the people who were, they were interested. Mm -hmm. And. Um, the, during that process of SEC, even the, even the meeting of it actually started from the executive board, mm. uh, we had requested myself, uh, my deputy had already been there, this was, uh, she was already been there, the, uh, that sister Penny had been already mm. been there as a member of the board. Mm. So, myself, then there's another member who had also been a member of the board sometime called him. Uh, at, at the time of this ordinary mm. meeting, mm. Pelina was already a member of the yeah, board. Yeah, I was already a member of the board. Okay. So for her, she wanted a, 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 like a, 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 a retired reappointment. Mm. Uh, then there was another man, man called Dr. Isaac. He was also a member of the board. Uh, then another man called Nelson. Had he been a member of the board of the earlier board, but this other one, he was, not, he was at the 10th board, no, the 9th, mm. like, but he was not a member of the 10th. Mm. So all those names were looked at. We are a total of five. And so we all sent out. Uh, the executive board discussed, and then they zeroed on my name. And then they turned the lady because in, we had to have one woman. So they told the lady, I think the lady, yeah, she was the only one who, who were interested out of the member. So for her, she had that advantage. So she was returned because we had and to have. She was, she was not a member of the board. Mm. So, me, so I was the new person. Mm. So we, my name and hers were forwarded to the SEC. To the, to, to the SEC. SEC. Mm, because the secretary, mm. it is the board that the secretary brought five names. Mm. The excess board looked at the five and removed the two and said these two are qualified. They take, took the two to sick. Mm. And then they also told them that, he, but in the executive board, there were five names. So I've done this and this, and we zeroed on two. Mm. And for us, of course, in the executive board, we were for, because we were conflict of interest, we were told to go out. Even in this meeting, we were told to go out. And then the sick had to say, OK, we, we adapt to these two. Or we, why, why did you leave out the other three? Maybe we take the three. So we came back. Mm. And they told us, uh, your names have been uh, taken. Mm. Uh, so what happened, we, uh, 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 letters are drafted, and then I signed, just like I've signed five times. This was now my fifth time mm. to, to submit names to NSSF. Mm. The four times I was not part. Yes. This the time I'm time part. You were part and now, the other lady who mm. I was going with had already been there, mm. and I already signed her earlier. So you signed for her Also, as part of so two people mm. we nominated. Mm. The minister because of these names and appointed. But when the na names came mm. on the in the in the in the what in the media that the people have been uh, appointed, mm. some people said, hey, but now we are not involved. You said, but SEC has been called and everyone was aware. Mm. Some of them were attended, but somehow I think you know, you know politics. Mm. So this we, we again had to convince another convene another emergency SEC. Now you can see that same now this time on eighth. Of September. That, is after, that was after appointment by the Yeah, minister. because we had had a meeting mm. of uh, a meeting of um, whereby we have nominated. Mm. When the names come out, some colleagues uh, raise issues. They already they say, they say, okay. Mm. So we called the meeting mm. of, on 8th mm. because they had gone on social media and all that. So we called the meeting on 8th of September mm. to resolve this, uh, among other issues. Mm. This would also be one of you. So they came and presented. I remember um, Brother Wanyama was there in the executive board, Alon and all that, even Keno. They came and presented. And then, of course, they were they finally the sake uh, after analyzing the whole matter. They are good that their petition was frivolous because actually there had been a process and the, some of them had attended the other meeting. Mm. And then it was resolved that this matter be rested. And that was it. So mm. uh, they, even were they even argued that, the, if you look at the minutes, they even argued that uh, the, the petition no longer, they even said it for the spirit of brotherhood. What they did was even wrong because they had written a lot of negative things in the mm. place. And that mm. the matter ended there. Mm. Mm. Now, we were shocked recently when the same people resurrected the same matter. And they were the same people who are not, you know, you can see, the, I don't know whether it was a coincidence, they are the same people who are, again, not, who had been, not have, paying affiliation. Mm. They are the same people who, who came up recently. They, they, these are the mm. people who mm. said, uh, who, 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 when, when I, had, I was called at parliament, 
there are the same people who came up and this, came up with ne negative views. Remember, there was when I was called and there was a data exchange and all that. Now the same people. Mm. Then people wonder because we had had a, a sake before going to Parliament, and you have not come. Now you come to Parliament, you are not even the subscriber, and then you are attacking us, and you are being even bring up, even you are trying to say that the day that I, I self nominated a girlfriend, but this lady who had been there in the what? In the board. In the board. Mm. We have no relationship from Western Uganda and from Eastern. Mm. Uh, and uh, during the other nominations, you not complain. Mm. Why is in, it why in, now in the tennis? Now you're even saying now. that she's my girlfriend, but she has been in the tennis, and mm. you were part of it. Mm. And then uh, even the same procedure, my brother like Wanyama has, has been on the industrial court. Mm. Because we don't only nominate in the, in the, in the so we even do industrial court. The same procedure we're using for from for Edison uh, was the same procedure we even used for him mm. to go to the industrial court. Mm. But no one has complained. So the question was okay. The procedure we're using he, he, for us is legal because even the, the NSF Act. Mm. was saying in the court should nominate even it was not required that we should have meetings but we even have gone next to having meetings why is it that this particular one is having issues that was the challenge because uh we have and we have used it throughout this is the fifth time now why are you making a lot of noise and you are, not, you are making noise because your dr yomoki so god name has been has gone and you're saying self-nomination but the same yomoki has sent names four times you have not question now the fifth time you are saying i don't have the grip i'm a secretary now i'm this seo so why do you say that i i've made a mistake to, to write a letter to saying when i've, I've done four times mm. and there's been no question mm. and two you are trying to bring a lot of black i mean on the, uh, my colleague who is a state secretary you know, who has been already there this is the second time you don't complain the, the, when you are we don't in the 10th mm. now you are bringing issues on when you are in 11th mm. Number three, your issues came up and we resolved them. Why do you keep quiet? Then, uh, one and a half years later, you now resurrect them when there is a contention. And then we are getting information that you are being funded. So we realized that this was some a scheme. You know, when you are trying to, uh, if you want to bring issues in the house, I think people look for those who have either have been having issues and whatever. So mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. someone who did this was smart enough. He tried to say, no, but now there are people who have been complaining, who had the petition, let me look for them. Because these petitions were taken to uh, NSSF, mm. they were taken to Labour, they were taken to Minister of, of Finance, and I think they were, they were not they were resolved and they were not brought into consideration. Mm. So, uh, so, for you to bring the same things, is like in law it's called double jeopardy. Mm, because yeah. it, you brought these petitions and the matter was resolved. Now, you wake up, you keep quiet. Now, uh, one and a half years later, yeah, when there is a contention in the, in the country about NSS, you come up mm. and you say, uh, we are having a challenge. That means that you, people say, but wh where have you been? First of all, Dr. Yomoka and the colleague have been there only for one and a half years. I mean, for one year. You have kept quiet. Why do you come at this time when it, there is a problem in NSSF and there is a lot of uh, mobilization? for and against investigation mm. so that's why we concluded that in, i think there is some other malice has thought in mm. all this process mm. and uh, you could even see when we went to the committee you would find that uh, they had already been there earlier so they were so aggressive more than everyone you know you could find that and then they were using negative words because you see for me it doesn't matter because i'm the secretary general even for all of them i'm the one even who took one of them to the industrial court when they, i mean i'm the one who signed the letter mm. Now, if you have issues, fine. For me, I'm, I mean, I'm a leader of everyone, so you can bring issues and we listen to. But if you cho choose a method of, of trying to de de sort of like um, uh, negative, mm. a lot of negative energy, you are calling all types of names, you're even calling now, you're even trying black mailers, the other is my girlfriend, you're mm. trying to, we are, I am a Christian, the, the, my friend, is a, my colleague is a Christian. Uh, we, our background, even now, we know our each, each the, but you know her parents, because for her, she's far younger than me. And uh, uh, we, we, we are respectful people in our profession, a medical doctor, mm. the, the other colleague is a lawyer with master. So we, we are, these are really respectable people in society. Mm. Mm. And then you start blackmailing. If, first of all, if the, if the colleague was not a member of the previous board, you would even say maybe there's an issue. Why has it come now? But second, yeah. if she was maybe someone who doesn't have a degree, maybe some small, then you would say, but maybe she, didn't, she was not qualified. But this is a person mm. who even the previous board, because I remember that time they refused all the nominees. Uh, they f you know, we, we took the nominees and the Uber disqualified all of them. And all the, she was among the workers, she was the only one who qualified them for the first time. So the question was, why are you becoming 
uh, bring issues. But second, if you bring issues, why not bring them in good faith, mm -hmm. in a brotherly manner? But you're bringing a very dis with a lot of energy, black camera. That was the challenge we had. Okay. So, doctor, uh, because these people you s who you say are black uh, blackmailed you, yes, uh, because they went earlier to the committee mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, was this enough for you to judge this committee as a no, biased one? No, no, you see the challenge we had. Mm. Uh, these are things that uh, I thought we, would not, we, are not, we are not, because uh, usually it's not good to raise these issues that, uh, not, that uh, put a problem on us as the mm. center and the workers. But mm. the reality was that uh, this committee now was, we are going to the committee at the end of January. But this negative ch shining had started from. Uh, around Christmas time, the, the time when the president ordered the investigation. So there are a lot of negativity. And you support the yes, investigation. And, and investigation. Yeah, mm. There was the only one like this in mm. the board and the president agreed with me. So there were, some people were not happy. Mm. So they had put up a lot of things in the press, black and mail. They had even tried to um, even tried to leak some information. You know, we had written a program for, I, I had come up with an initiative, my colleagues, the workers, on what was called the, um, uh, um, a program which was called financial literacy mm. because we had realized that people who, who, who retire and get pension from NSS, I, I mean, get uh, that benefit, government benefit, they sort of uh, they, they pay the, they, get, they get their money when they are 55 if they have stopped working. If they are still working, they get, I mean, 50 if they have stopped working, if they mm. don't have a job. Mm. But if they are still working, you can get your money when you are 55. Now, we had realized that most of the people who get this money, within three years, they have used all their money. And the way they use their money is in a manner that is not useful to them because some of them don't have houses. So they try to build houses and by the money is finished when they are on, at, at like a ring, ring beam. Mm -hmm. So they don't even, so the person ends up here, has put all the money in ring mm -hmm. on the house and the house is not used. Mm -hmm. We also had some others who do start a uh, business. Then the business collapses and cannot survive. Mm -hmm. So we had addressed that point a bit by, by giving what is called the midterm, term So someone can get a man at 45, and if you start a business, so when by 25, you have already done something. So we had, but we said, why can't we do what is called financial literacy? So we can, people can start understanding that for instance, you are five and you have not built a house, maybe you might not be want to build a house over one billion, or maybe you can build a house, maybe a smaller one. So people would invest wisely. Uh, uh, so you start people have some knowledge, mm. that, that type of thing. Mm. Uh, so we came up with a program which was called financial literacy program mm -hmm. and the board, we convinced the board to give it 400 million to call 400 million to not. We also later on realized, because we did a pilot, it, some of this money had, we released money in about so 100 million. You, you convinced the board yes. to provide 400 million for not to. And 400 million for COVID. COVID. In August, mm -hmm. we decided to release, out of the 400, we released 100 each mm -hmm. to do a pilot. Mm -hmm. So when we did the pilot, uh, uh, like for COFT, we did the market vendors, drivers, we had the workshops mm. and many other activities. Mm. But later on, we realized that whereas we have many unions, uh, we, ha we had worked with about four, four, five. And some of the unions were raising issues, that, but now we, we were not doing it for all of us. Number two, we do not have clear, what are called the KPIs, the key uh, performance indicators. Because NSS wanted this financial literacy also to have a component where you, uh, you even increase on coverage uh, so that more people join because the law had been changed where by now uh, every, every, every worker now is a member of a national association for the kind of fund. In the, in, the, in, the, those, in the old law, we mm. used to have only employees, employers who have more than five who would mm. contribute to NSSF. Now, every employer. Mm. And then some of the employers, when you look at the statistics in terms of people paying URA and pay as you earn, you know that it's like 30 percent of the employers who are complying to NSF. So there are people where some people were deducting workers money, but they were hiding. So they, they, we, we, we had to agree on a formulation that is going to do uh, financial literacy, but at the same time, add, you are adding value in terms of competence. I mean, the capacity of the members in financially, but also you are trying to uh, support NSSF in its mandate of coverage and also in terms of compliance. Mm. So we added those figures. So because of that, 
And because of the pilot who have, who have done, and they also need what are called the key performance indicators. Mm. We established what is called a, a framework. How, 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 where, should, what, where should we do this? And then we also came up with what was called the Memorandum of Understanding. Have you seen the point? So we said the release of the additional 300, if, and we can even improve it to more, would be able to cater for uh, to, in a, such a manner that you will have to achieve the, even the aspects of compliance and, and, um, and the uh, coverage. Mm. But then the, the question arose was that if you provided 400 million, and already one hundred has already been used for some uh, sort of um, uh, pilot, you are meaning 300, we have additional areas that we need support. For instance, immobilization is different because if you are talking about uh, talking to workers, sensitizing them to join the uh, NSSF, and also it's also a different thing. You might find that to, to make a member join, you might not go there once, you go there several times. Number two, we had the problem of technology because in the memorandum of understanding, we had said the two million members of, of, NS, of, of COFT should do, we could find out how many of them are already members of what? NSSF. So those who are not, if you, for instance, out of 400, maybe 100, out of 2 million, maybe 200 are members of NSSF. Then the 1.8 must automatically we find out how we make to convince them to become members of NSSF. So we said we needed a digital platform mm. because our, you know, our, our, we, we are not uh, digital, we are, uh, so we said we need that digital platform. And then we also need the support in terms of mobilization. But also we need the support in terms of what is called the uh, uh, corporate social responsibility because mm. we saw that there are people like if you look at for instance the market vendors for them uh, they have not been they are not employed they are self-employed yeah now their issues are different from our issues for them you are saving money maybe you want to save money for Christmas you save my save money maybe for if someone dies or that type of thing so we needed to add to add additional low, uh, sort of benefits so we said for people like market vendors, let us come up with a product. For instance, we said um, uh, we can come, we can support women who do who sell tomatoes. We start something that is doing uh, tomato sauce, a process value addition. So that a, a, a market vendor will know that I will have my tomatoes. If I know that they might get lot in the next three to four days, I sell these tomatoes to, the, to I put them to value addition, mm. and then we we'll have our product of tomato so sauce. So. It was on that background that I, I me as Secretary General, I wrote a letter. Mm. The letter I wrote, I said, uh, we have a framework, and we've signed the memorandum of understanding with NSSF, mm -hmm. uh, and we've already used 300 mm. in, in August. Mm. Uh, that was the first quarter, because that was the first quarter of the year. Uh, well, there's a balance of 300, but we are also suggesting... You used 100. Eh, eh. So we're also suggesting... For the pilot. Uh -huh, we are suggesting... Mm that you give us 600, remember I said 200 for, for technology, mm. uh, 200 for mobilization, mm. another 200 million for uh, civil, so, so corporate responsibility. Mm. Mm. Now, out of this money, only 300 had been the agreed. Now, the other one, 600 had to go into a process so either they will refuse or not. Mm. Now, because of this confusion in NSSF, this letter was leaked to the place. Oh. And then they started saying, Dr. Lemuk has got one billion. <laughs> you, know, you know, that was now the mobilization on the platform. Mm. How can Dr. Lemuk take one billion? And he has illegal activities, which even the second has said, now that was the time. This is team trying to put that on the what? Mm. On the social media. Mm -hmm. And then even I remember the, even some papers even wrote about it, even this online media wrote about that. Dr. Lemuk even has got the one billion. If that was illegal, we don't have, so that was the time. So by the time I got the committee, Two things happened. One is that the committee had already believed that type of that. If there was no meeting, there was illegality, and then uh, they, 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 you could say that they had believed that type of, of narration and sort of falsehood. But secondly, we also had on that committee uh, a colleague of mine who, we, because we had been with, with him in parliament several years, and who had been mobilizing against me, and we had issues. And uh, one time, they came to us and he had wanted us to fund them to go to IRO at that time in, in last year, in, mm. in June. Mm. Now, because Parliament didn't have the money. So as a, a board, we said the, the bill was going to be big because to support all the workers' MPs needed almost 500 billion. 
So, and then the board, so if we are going to use almost one billion into this, going to Geneva, just so we, if you, we, we turn down the offer just, the board. Just to attend the, uh, the conference. Now, the, when the, the, uh, that uh, pr proposal was turned down, mm. there was a speeding within the, the workers' front end that Dr. Yomoki, because he has issues with his colleague, mm. is the one who turned down the what? Mm. The offer. So there was like, now we shall see, there was that member. So that member. W w mm? The funds they wanted, was it also part of the money you are? No, no, this is different. This is different. Uh, this is because yeah. the, the board has its own money. Now they wanted the money to come from the board budget, because the board budget has the money for travel and mm. others. Mm. So we said, no, but now if we, they, all the money for the board for there is going to go into this, and that would be unfair for if mm. we just travel and whatever. Mm. Now, but that one was taken badly in the workers' community by, by my colleague. So mm. now that colleague was on the, on the committee. Uh, and then from our political intelligence, he was the one who was trying to find these, to, to find these people with other people. Mm. So already for me, I, I knew that there was conflict because it's a conflict of interest. Mm. And then also Marisa first thought, because if already, you already, someone, the day we went, mm. the, already someone had said that I had, I had sort of nominated myself mm. to the committee mm. and the, I was uh, even with my girlfriend. Mm. That thing was there. To the board. That was black and Yes. Mm. Now, and in the committee, so there was that type of. So we, we wrote a letter and said, since we have issues with a colleague on, on that, on that they, you wrote there the is a conflict of interest. Yes. Mm. And the speaker had not responded to us. Mm. And uh, and when I went there, I could see that the way the committee handed me over, they even said, uh, you, you cannot talk because you are a member of the board. Mm. Uh, then they what? Then they said what? So there was not the, the thing was not good really at the first mm. appearance. So mm. we said, mm -mm, I think there is a problem here. So it's when I went back, mm. that's when we wrote a letter to the speaker that we, we, the, what we have experienced is not good. Mm. A lot of disgrace, even the people being put under saying you, you swear, you swear, fine, swearing is okay. But uh, you know, did you uh, write this letter as the general secretary or as Doctor Sam? No, as the general secretary. Because when I went, secretary, when I went back, mm. we met as my chairman and others. They said, no, I think this is not any fair. They were being, even the whole second. Fuck. The whole sex said we cannot go back because they are taking us as criminals. They're even saying there are CIDs here. Okay. What you come here? So it was really very serious. You know, these, these people had gone genuinely. Mm. And then you are taking them outside. You are even warning them. You are saying, if you do this one, we shall arrest you. People said, no, this is intimidation. What is it? So, mm. so when they, we went back, the people were so uh, unhappy. Mm. So they said, no, doctor, I think you write right and draw the attention to the, to the speak about this because I have been a member of parliament for 25 years. Mm. What happened was I have never done such a thing. I have chaired the committees and so I, in good faith, because me, me, we wanted the good information to come out and I had a lot of information. So I was like uh, burning to give my information to the committee. So, but I did want that aspect of uh, conflict of interest to be there. So mm. I wrote in good faith. Mm. When I wrote in good faith, the committee misunderstood me. Mm. Uh, when I went back as a board member, they told me that I should do withdraw Enjoy but i said of course it will i was like I'm, I'm putting my colleagues under a difficult situation because it's okay maybe i judge them wrongly to say the conflict of interest but i mean to say they are uh, but if my petition has not been legal and uh, responded to i cannot be told the, and now i've come as a, mem a body member now mm. to tell me that i should withdraw i said no i think it's not right because so you would have withdrawn if you had come as a, a member of COP2? No, oh no uh, but in any case, uh, uh, I had consulted. Mm. So even to withdraw, as COP2 would have had to consult each other and say, now what do we do? Mm. But now you get me as the one person, Secretary General, and now I've come as a, a board member, I should withdraw the other thing, mm. and I'm alone, I cannot consult. Now I said, really, how can I? Because my writing the letter, I wrote as a CEO, as Secretary General. How can I come and withdraw? It means that I've personalized the whole thing. I cannot just come here and tell me to withdraw because the letter came after consultation. Even we put it there. Mm. And you have not responded. So I was put under very, of course, I could understand the thinking. I mean, sort of, you, you see the, what can I say, the, the colleagues. I mean, maybe you are, have you, and I, maybe I, I say maybe you are not happy with them. Mm. But, but also, I was also a constraint. So I decided to leave it at that. And I said, okay, I think. If, if, if maybe I have not been given a chance, mm. uh, because I had come with a lot of, uh, I, I, because I had been a member, of a course. lot of information yeah. that I had mm. been a member of, uh, I mean a chair of SACA, that is staff, I the corporate staff, there were a lot of issues that I thought I would also assist in terms of volunteering information. Because uh, I, we had loved this investigation since I was among the people who had pushed. We had written to the IGJ, he was already investigating and uh, uh, the general, and the new parliament that was adding in in terms of, so we really appreciated, but the, the, the way the whole thing was handled, I think we had some bit of... So when you left, yeah. yes. you asked the committee to avail yeah. you with some time yes. to meet them without that member who you accused of conflict. Yes, of and, and I, 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 did I, you I, get no, they, didn't give, they didn't give me 
at that time and I never met them. When the speaker referred your letter mm. or the letter from Kofto mm. to the committee, yes. was that enough response? No, I was not aware of that as referred because for me, I never got information. But the, com the committee read to you the... the, the no, they were reading, but now, because the, when we were writing the letter, we even gave copy to the committee chair. Okay. So we didn't know how he had got it. Is it because of his copy? Is it because and the letter had been written to the what? Mm. To the chair. Okay. So, uh, and, and, and you see what also happened was, even after denial of that opportunity, we said, okay, just for purpose of support, we can even give some of the information because there are some information that requested when they were talking there. So we wrote a letter and gave that information. Okay. But when it came to uh, even the recommendations and even when you look at the, the narrative within the, the, the report, they ignored all that. The, it was a one-sided narrative. Because, for instance, they even never referred to the fact that we had the meetings. Mm. They never referred to or whatever was in, even my colleague who was there because for her she was not sent out uh, the other co the colleague the lady mm. uh, she, as a member of the board she even tried to clarify a lot of things but all those things if you look at the, the report they, no one has written about them mm. so you could see that um we had that challenge of course i'm not uh, trying to blame the committee mm. i'm not trying to uh but i'm trying to show you really for me from my thinking you could mm. see that I, I was disadvantaged what i can say from your thinking mm. is that uh what you forethought mm was proved no I, I i i of course i mean from seeing because if you I, I give a complaint you don't respond and you just even throw me out because i was putting myself in the issues if i was the chair because i'd been there for 25 years and i chaired committees if i've been if i was on that committee and the chair and you come and tell us that you, you your committee is biased i will prove you wrong i will say okay you you you, you give your views and you see if we are biased mm. and that we should listen to you i would mm. not chase you because i'm actually I'm, I, I would not be because i have the powers chair mm. now the person who is coming to, to listen to, to be listened to is, is the most weak the most brutal now so i cannot throw that person out because the person is coming to give me information in any case i can refuse the information i can take it mm. but i give the person a chance because everyone listens and then and, and that, that one the person who even by being able to give you a chance might say eh, maybe i was wrong maybe this committee is not biased but if you if you don't even respond even to my question mm. because what would i would have done if like for instance where i am in the nssf board every meeting is what is called the conflict of interest yeah and when there is conflict of interest is a must that you must do what is going to you choose yourself you come out of that meeting mm. that's why even when we were meeting at the coft when they were discussing the matter concerning the as as the, uh, the nomination they told us to move out you cannot be in that meeting because there are things that people, 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 people ask, you know, it's always that's the, 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 the corporate principle, the corporate government principle. But the, the, the other point I wanted to make is, yes, if I've raised the issues about a colleague and he, who is a friend, but I think he has a conflict of interest, because conflict of interest is not like he's your enemy, not, you just said there's someone who has some bias or who has some, mm, who's mm, even a friend. Mm, mm, mm. And you are, you are not, not doing it from a negative, you are doing it from a positive, you, are, you wanted the due process to be seen because if you, your people are saying uh, the colleague is doing this and this and then you say that person should choose himself from the committee and then the person does not go out, out then you are not allowed then he, of course uh, you, you start questioning the narrative whether it was biased or not i mean was it fair or not i mean so, so okay. for me that's really the question that so, has so, come up so doctor now leaving that aside yes uh under what circumstances would money be drawn from an, an account of Kofto? No, you see, um, the way money is drawn from an account of Kofto is if uh, the conscience provides that uh, monies from an account uh, are, draw, are given for that particular purpose. And uh, before you even use that money, you even get that money and, you, and put it in another account for that purpose. So, uh, that's what we are following as Kofto. We, we, in terms of the, for instance, this, this um, corporate social responsibility, we are, we are actually wanting to open a separate account for it. But because this it was a new venture, uh, the money came on the, normal, the general account when we started it, because this was the first time. So what we did was to draw cash and hand it over to a program officer. And then that program officer was able to run. And the good thing, that being, since I was the Secretary General, 
uh, they, they, they were the uh, people in the program office at the account and they would initiate and then whatever then the thing would come to my office then I sign it goes back and then to the, to the uh, accountant who pays so we 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 had um, a very good principle in terms of the way money should be utilized uh, the only thing we had not done for this particular money was that we had not opened a special account and actually that is what we had agreed that for the next three days we are supposed to have a special account so that because if you are putting the money on a general account you are mixing up money with many other payments and what will happen is that um, some of the payments could come up and they can even eat the money because if the some money has there to come and then this one is there and then there's a payment can easily eat up the money and then and yet this man had a very strict uh, sort of um, uh, we needed to be a strict accountability it had a very strict uh, sort of performance indicators uh, and we didn't want to be, to mix up with other things. So, yeah. So on our side, we thought, first of all, this was a very good program. But we also thought that uh, if we deliver very well, because we had even told the fund that this man is little, because what we are to, if we are to recruit, because the National Social Fund has been now they have one thousand one point three million workers, about six hundred something. These are the ones that are active, and about six hundred demand. So. If you are talking about recruiting up to about two million, and you are doing financial literacy, we are given an indicator of one million, and then we are given another group where we say this, even the additional program product. Like this, this was a big thing. Mm. So we knew that um, with time, we are going to go into certain other decisions. For instance, uh, trying to uh, maybe increase the funding, trying even maybe to second. Because you maybe staff, because you see we have that policy within the NSC whereby you can even get a staff one or two second of the centers and the, the because this was going to be a very, very powerful way of trying to improve social security and coverage. Because for us that is our niche. And we have the structures, but but in NSSF, their niche is social security, but they, they are not they have a, a challenge of organic linkages with the, the grassroots. So for us we knew that even when we do that work, that is our work. Because the, the mere fact that workers have joined social security is good enough for me as secretary general. If I can say this year we are brought on board maybe uh, two, or maybe 200,000, just as an example. Mm. NSA would be happy because their numbers increased. But even me, I would be happy that uh, I have assisted you, you 200 have members. In, I have supported mm. 200 members into the product of mm. being insured. I mean, mm. sort of having mm. uh, security under the social security fund. So. Mm. Um, to me, this was a very, very powerful and important uh, thing. But now the challenge that came in, as I said, was the spinning. Because when this letter was picked, it uh, picked the sort of that negative narrative, and then a lot of questions started coming up of that. And the people were asking questions. Not even, they did not have the concept. They did not have the memorandum. They are not even known the, 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 the way the money was going to be utilized. Some of them, I remember even I got letters from unions saying that give us 80 million, give us. Then I said, no, this money, all of you actually, because the first program, the, the pilot, we, we, we concentrated on some of you unions, we concentrated on uh, markets, we concentrated on uh, uh, drivers, we concentrated on uh, women, because we had even a women national congress, and then other meetings, and then we had uh, some national programs, which, in, in which went into regions, nationally they were going to sensitize. Now, we had even now improved and said, uh, in order for us to have better accountability and visibility, we established um, what we call the a coordination committee, which was comprised, comprised of general secretaries and the chairman of the women committee and the chairman of the youth committee. In the recent sake, some members said, bring also the chairman of the unions on that committee, which is what was called to be coordination. Because they were saying, according to the framework, we had to put more emphasis on informal economy, market vendors. But the other unions were also saying, no, let us be, in the, let us be part of them bigger committee so that whatever money comes we we are part of it we know what is going and then when it comes to accountability they do it and then finally the accountability will pass through us and then it is taken to NSS even if they were not requiring the accountability at that time so we thought one we had good structures there, but number two we thought the um, pilot had assisted us because we had lessons on how to improve because before the pilot we not have the secretary, the general secretary's committee. But after the pilot, and after give, given the, what we picked, where general secretary was saying, but now my union was not involved then, we said, oh, maybe what we would have done, for this general secretary, maybe it was good for all the to be part of a bigger meeting, 
then we can the information can go there and you can just find why we are maybe his union is not involved or why even if it's at what level because some unions do not have uh, already their membership was big enough so you cannot say that if market vendors are about to one million in the country and you have another union maybe like a university which is maybe university professional maybe about to ten thousand members and but so most of them are already unionized you might not give the same money to that to, and effort to that to university than to the market so those are things that we thought mm. uh, the problem was the involvement if every union has come mm. and uh, participated even in the implementation because when this idea was generated in one of the second meetings we had given told them that we are coming up with certain program uh, a framework of cooperation but we not tell them the details because say, according to uh, the policy you give the strategic direction not going into the details so we had, they knew that we were doing something but they didn't know exactly what it was so but the secretariat knew where i'm a chair as the head of the secretary we knew the details but we are not given the all the details to say so our intention was um uh, immediately we get approval because initially when we were starting it was not clear that it would be approved so when we uh, bought approved our intention was now we take it to the sake and the whole process now we give them the whole details which we did which we did i think in the last sake with all the details that was the timing but by that time already there has been a lot of negative uh, the unfortunate part was this, the fact that this type of process coincided with the, the issue of the md renewal and all that and the investigation so uh this type of good program was like uh, overtaken and overwhelmed by the other investigation and all that and then mm. people picked some of the issues here and tried to put them into the narrative so doctor yes did you withdraw 100 million from the account and channeled it to dr penina to no, to uh, Madame that, that's why that's why i was uh, shocked that actually even Madame penina was shocked because she never got involved in this money uh her role was to where the programs have been finished her role was to receive and then she flew her because we wanted to have some bit of chain which is my deputy it passes to me so she received the no, money she never received her role was to receive the uh the up uh, the, the the sort of the accountability the, accountability. Uh, the money the way the money moved myself and the treasurer general we are the signatories and the chairman general why is it that uh, the 400 million yes was linked to the 1.8 billion which was uh, disguised as a corporate social investment. No, you see, now, and that's, that's where the problem came, because what happened was that during the process of uh, approval, because you see the, the law provides that the board uh, shall pass the budget with the approval of the minister. Now, approval means there are a lot of things take place, because if, 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 if I say my, you are the one to approve something, what is the process of approval? How, how do you handle approval? That means that we shall write to you, technically, because we cannot just talk to you. These are figures. We can are you write talking to you. about approving no, or initiating? No, no, I'm talking about approval. Approving. The issue was, the law says, the, min, the board shall pass the budget with the approval of the, the minister. minister. So, it means that the, board, the budget is initiated by the management and whatever it comes to the board, and the board takes it to the after. The board, the board has a minute. They, take, they write to the minister, mm. the chairman, saying this is the... the budget for this year want you to approve mm. that is what the law says mm. so and that's what we follow so in the process of the approval the minister had some issues that she raised she was she said that you are not giving emphasis to certain activities that do with the recruitment and mobilization of members to join the fund most of the programs were on investment and so she had guided in, uh, in the meeting uh, with the, because when the letter was taken to to her she had additional information she wanted. That's what we are told. Because this was not between the management and the chairman who was representing us. And you see, the chairman cannot go without the management because the management is the one which has the details. So they go there and then she, they, she means her, tells them, we need, I need more uh, sort of information. Mm. So they provide that information. Mm. When they provide that information, they had a meeting. And finally, according to what we heard was that they agreed that what the minister was raising was legitimate and therefore there should be reallocations within the budget. The budget was about 220 billion, what is called the budget for operations. Now, so the minister writes to us, back to the chairman, because the chairman had asked for approval and the process there was in some meetings and all that. Mm. She writes to us and says, um, the, um, this, I'm according, uh, following the letters and the minister have had with you, I'm according, uh, approving 
the, the, the budget with the following modifications. So she tells us we should modify six billion should be given to certain activities because of mobilization and all that. So that later comes. Now, for me, uh, having been in parliament and understanding the process, I, for me when that letter came, I, under, I understood that that letter was an instrument because how, how, would we have, how would we have liked the minister to approve? Because approval, you do what? What is the instrument of approval? Do they say you go and gazette or what? For me, because if you look at the past, all the years, the minister of finance and whatever has been approving through a letter back to the chairman. Mm. So when the, the, the chairman, the minister writes that letter to the chairman, me, I understood it to mean an instrument of approval. But that instrument of approval had a variation where she was recommending that there should be a modification in terms of reallocation. That was the, what the minister had done. So for me, it's okay. You have approved, but also you have done modifications and whatever. So let us come back to the drawing board as a board and we we'll see what to do. Unfortunately, that letter was picked and then there was a, it was put in the press and the social media and they were saying that the minister was demanding for money that she has written to us, demanding for money to be taken to a ministry. the ministry. And now that thing had two challenges. One, the letter the minister had written was not a, a letter from her. Initiation towards the response to a letter the board had written requesting for approval of the what? The budget. The budget. So she was doing her mandate of approval. But in that approval, she has given instruction because when you approve, you can very you can even refuse, you can do what? Mm. That's number one. So you are calling it an instruction. You, you, you are already saying, uh, even that she has made a message to comment on 26. So, so my question was legally, what would it was, it was supposed to rubber stamp? Or what? So for me, Technical, I saw from a very independent point of view that the minister was trying to do her job to do approval, but now already there was a lot of spinning and negativity. Mm. Then, number two, you are saying the minister is saying give her money. The, the, in that letter, the, there was no, no, no such a thing. The minister just wrote and said, uh, with the following modifications, give, give six billion within the budget to this and this. So, you are already saying the minister wants the money, so you are saying that she has said take the money to her minister, minister. but there is no such thing in the letter. Mm. So already you're adding certain things. Number three, you're already implying as if the minister was saying the 60 billion is going to come from, to be in addition to the 220 billion for what? Okay. So it's like you are telling her that as if the minister told us that look for more money. The minister talked of reallocation with the 220. Mm. So, mm. so she, she has not added anything. She has just tried to tell you to guide you. Mm. Now, in, in, when the board started discussing and the management, we realized that what the minister was talking about, uh, of course, was one of the things was saying engagement with the stakeholders. We realized that already we had already catered for about 1.8 within that category because the already the, four, like the 800 to the unions were already part of that. Because if she's saying we are, the unions are stakeholders, mm. so we, we interpreted and said, Oh, out of what the minister is trying to say, for her, she's talking of reallocating six billion, but mm. already. When you look at the, the, the program, we, the, already 1.8 mm. is catered for the, that. The breakdown. Uh, is already there. So mm. we said, oh, so they said, okay. Which means, if there is already 1.8 mm. already, if we are to allocate, we have to allocate, if we are to make 6 billion, mm. we have to allocate 4.2. Mm. Because already 1.8 is already catered mm. for within. Because mm. when you read her, say the activity 1, 2, 5, or maybe mm. 6 activities. Mm. Activity number one, she's talking about, but it's already here. And it's, uh, like already we are dealing with social, mm. we are already doing uh, financial services. Yeah, inclusion. and financial services already and all that. So mm. we, that's how we understood now. Now, but you, as we are doing that, the wave caught us with us. People are saying, well, how have you given 1.8? Now, this 1.8 was not yet, initially, to, by the time we gave 1.8, we were not even aware that the minister would raise that later. So 1.8 was not, was not part of the, one, the 6 billion. Mm. Because already we gave it independent. But when the minister writes, we realize that no, already 1.8 is what she's talking about when you interpret her later. Mm. We already have given 1.8 towards so what she wants. For yes. Yeah. So to, and then the four point, and then she was saying there are some wasteful activities like uh, workshops, which you talk about 10 billion. Then there was mm. something like a branding, advertisement, and you know, uh, promotion, which took like 7 billion. So we, we knew areas where we could cut. Mm. So our, as we were trying to do that, we said, okay, what the minister has raised is good enough. What can it be cut from where? But now, the other thing that came up was that the public had already been told that the minister wants 60 billion. 
information was diluted. And the spin, actually, they mm. called it that changed. Mm. And they, there was a lot of misinterpretation, falsehoods, and all that. I saw a court in that wave. A, a seemingly good venture, because we had already done it, one point, it already, from if you look at the ministers, you interpret the minister, and we need just to improve. In fact, there was even an argument within the board and uh, within the uh, even the management that if, even if we do, even if we cannot reallocate the tune of six billion, we can still even reallocate maybe three billion. Or then we write back to the minister because the letter she has written as approval is not written in stone. It, it can still be verified. So we said if there is any challenge, suppose we realize maybe what those activities maybe six billion is too much. But we, we said we can still write. And say, okay, hold on, Minister, you have requested that we allocate uh, six billion towards these activities already. When we looked at our budget, we had 1.8, and uh, we have done further reactions. Maybe now the, it has come to 4 billion, and therefore we request that you, you write for us a, a new instrument saying that 400 is only 4 billion. That's all the, 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 the debate which was going, going to mm, take place. Mm. But uh, when we are trying to meet and also, uh, Try to, because the minister also told us uh, to, uh, to work with management to make sure that we have uh, a, a sort of like a time a, a timeline mm. uh, and the detailed program of, of activity implementation plan of this how we are going to do now in two activities at the management and all that. The, the, all that was caught up by the events, the events, and, and now the spinning, and now this became like a, people are calling it an illegal money. Uh, people were, even people are saying that this six billion was being going to be shared between the, the workers, Dr. Yomoki, mm. Minister, and the new MD. Mm. You know, mm. all those things. So it, the whole thing had was a lot of mixed up, and it was demonized actually. To the extent that even people started not want to just share themselves with the six billion because the population had really misunderstood it. They had um, sort of said this was a very bad. Uh, uh, amount money, you know, the minister wants to take this money. And however much you people could be, even I saw the minister trying to explain. I saw even the board. I saw, but people already the mindset had been set. Mm. So that's really the challenge that oh. we had with that. So that you have cleared that. Yes. But now I have only two like mm. questions. Then we yes. leave. Um, yes. How many times? Oh. Had NSSF, you said you had a memorandum of understanding. Yes, yes, yes. But how many times had NSSF financed activities of COFTU? Now, and that was also another challenge. Uh, NSSF had funded the activities of COFTU for the last maybe 10 or no more than 15 years. Because, because what, what would happen, they would fund COFTU and they would also fund not. They fund COFTU, and, and that's why you saw a mix up. Recently, when the speaker and the parliament was handling this matter, there was that 200 million they were talking about. Then they also talked about uh, 400 million and they are eight. You remember there was a big sub. So uh, <coughs> the, 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 the current amounts that were given to COFTU and not were 100 million in August. But then in parliament, you saw some people were saying that, because when they were saying they have given 100 million to COFTU and 100 million to not, that's 200 to the unions. Other people are interpreting that actually it's 200 to each center. Remember, you know, because if you say 200 now, they don't know that you have summed it up. And then others even said in December. Because the reason why they were giving December was because the money, by the time it was given in August, the MD, the ex former MD was still there acting. I mean, it was still the MD. Mm. And his tenure ended in the end of November. Now, people were trying to link this payment with the acting MD because they were trying to show that we, for us we are pushing the acting MD. That, that was the type of narrative. That's why they were, they were trying to talk of December because December means it is the acting MD who has given you the money. That was the type of thinking. So, so um, the reality was that the money was received in August under the former MD and it was 100 million per center, but the 300 for each center was still there. That's number one. Number two, in the last many years, maybe 10 or so, COFTA has got about 300 or 400 million in the last 10 years under what is called corporate social responsibility. Even not has got the same amount. But we have got the same amount, which has also got more money, which has gone to MT and other social responsibility, which has given to Parliament and others. So the question was, why are you talking about the money of the centers and not the other organizations? Why can't you say, what a list of all organizations, including Parliament, who has this money from NSSF. And if you are saying, uh, if you are talking about a list of those organizations, then you ask for accountability. You, you don't, before you go to 
uh, pay back refund. You, I, why do you want to refund? First of all, find out uh, that money went under what under what arrangement. Number two, if there's, there was no requirement for accountability, why can't you demand that there should be accountability? Number three, you say failure to account, people take liability. And that will sort out the matter because you'll come to court to have accountability, not have accountability. Now, you start uh, saying that people should refund, and the people you are refunding, you are, giving, you are refunding to people unfairly because the way the money is, is withdrawn from centers and organizations, you're either the signatory withdraws or someone you have delegated. Not to have delegated some young officer. Kofu had not yet delegated because Kofu is a young organizer. Now, you are punishing this officer in Notu who has been delegated, someone mm -hmm. called Viola, and you mm -hmm. say she should find 400. But her has been always, the right she goes and brings the money. Mm -hmm. Then she, you say, she, you know, the, and then for Kofu, because the office has withdrawn, now she refund. Why can't you say, let there be accountability first? And then you, you because the Parliament gives recommendation and guidance, so you can say failure to account, they should refund or the people who have uh, who have either participated in, 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 in misappropriation or whatever should be uh, uh, held liable. Very simple. Maybe they are crucifying Viola for conspiracy. No, I, for me, I'm trying to show you that it's so it's so unfair because for me, I know how the whole thing works. It's very unfair for you to just say because Viola is the one who has picked the money and that person has just picked the and then she refund. That's really unfair. And in any case, it's been unfair to say even there should be the fund when not to and go to have run activities. What you would start with is to say, uh, let there be accountability. Uh, now, and then if there is no accountability issues. Now, I'm not blaming parliament. What I'm trying to say is that uh, the recommendation for them to say there should be accountability uh, for them to say we should follow up this money was good because for me that was really a good eye opener for us. The only challenge I'm seeing is that you have only talked about two, two organizations, but you have been organizing who have taken even more money, and, 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 as I said, and others, even the uh, parliament. So, what you would start by saying, let us know how much money has gone under CSR because CSR is a good company, you cannot demonize. If you NSF gave money to either whatever institution, they have done it in good faith. But for you, maybe you, you have a question mark. So you would say, ah, no, okay. Two things can happen. One, let them account. Number two, if you feel that it because it's is not good, let us stop it. You cannot do it retrospectively. That, for me, that's why I think that from a corporate governance point of view, that's mm -hmm. what you would do. You first of all ask for accountability of the past. And if there is no accountability, liability. Two, if you think the concept is good, for me, I think that concept is good. But if, it, if you think it is good, then you will say, let us now let us modify the borders of Paland. Now this time we should be giving this amount. Maybe we should do, do this. We should not. You, you can get number three. If you think the whole arrangement is not good, then you can stop and say starting from this year, that's the end. And we, we, people will implement. But when you go and you jump on refund, <laughs> already people say, mm, why why refund? Mm. Why are you trying to victimize? Are you to, I, I, because the whole process of, of investigation of guidance from parliament are, are good processes and we really thank them because if you look at the the way the commission have come they have like and they are openers even where there is a modification of the recommendation why that is a good thing because it never it had never it had not occurred to us first of all as the fund and also the institution that we should that there should be some accountability because if you have given csr i think it's a good practice to ask those people can you write to us and account to you how you have used that money? Mm -hmm. But if you just give the money and then I think it's not good. So, and that's good, that was the procedure. So for me, I saw that that was a good uh, addition to the account. But secondly, maybe sit with the people and say there should be certain guidelines. And that is the attempt that the NSF had done by the memorandum of understanding. Uh, so they, they were giving issues and then they were, they were even providing that uh, there will be six i mean by annual every six months they, there will be a meeting between the centers and and the the, the nsf to, to look at the accountabilities and to sort of like see what is it? that was a new addition which we had already put and then they were saying that uh each party can rescind or revoke the memorandum with your notice so which means that cof to or not had the, they could even write to NSF we don't want this money because maybe it's a pro or not even the nsf itself had the power to say that we have stopped giving you the money after notice. So we had tried to do certain things, but maybe 
we, we could do better because uh, usually in terms of checks and balances, mm. uh, there's a need for uh, people to sort of uh, have structures and also have to you know, report and also supervision. And then also another thing which was very important, which really had come up, was that uh, if you are having members of the board, like for instance myself, and I'm also Secretary General, and we discuss this thing, what do we do? Because myself and the deputy have, and, and we are the signature. Why can't we maybe in terms of this funding, we try to, 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 to allocate another officer who will be the one to even write letters? Because for us, we are the ones who, go, who are going to, who are in the board. So if you again were here in this one, we already had seen that and we had said, I think, uh, I think we should stop getting involved. So that, I, I mean, in terms of writing, uh, okay, I'm the Secretary General, but what I said maybe we could even delegate and when it comes to these matters where I'm involved, we can uh, look for another officer to be involved in that and we can give them the power to write. Those are all things that were coming up. Uh, so even by the time the, the recommendation came, we had already thought about them and, we, and for me it was like in good faith. Okay. The only challenge was that uh, a lot of people were again getting that because if, they, if you have done something good, this man has the, the, the motives good, in fact the purpose. But maybe uh, there was lack of information. Maybe we lack certain additional sort of like uh, processes. At this stage, the most important thing is to improve on the state. But if you come with a mindset that there should be refund, should, I think that's where the problem comes. And then other people take advantage and then they are saying, uh, uh, now you're having people also because of dynamics and politics in, in, in organizations, in institutional politics, and then people are saying, oh, this Dr. York should be impeached, you know, that type of thinking, because it means that you are trying to bring a lot of, um, you are trying to, to uh, misuse, take advantage of in bad faith. I mean, mm. a recommendation parliament, which is good for the institution and for all of us, so then someone wants so to take advantage so and sort so of finally, misuse it. Finally, doctor. Yes. Uh, the, the report rec recommends that you and uh, Penina leave the board. And on top of that, it concludes that yeah. the 12th board it should be should dissolved. Be dissolved. Yes. And so that, that means all the... the all the things. And also the minister. Yes. And also the minister should resign. And then some members of the mm. top management should, get should set aside. Yes. Okay, now, yes, you are right. Uh, but you see... In terms of those recommendations, they, are, they don't. It is uh, it is not us to take action. Those recommendations is supposed to be government. So for us, because you see, when the recommendation of, of Parliament, after they have resolved them, they have read, they, they they try to sort of like fine tune them. Then the clerk writes to the respective executive, executive mm. office mm. or department, and then they implement. So that is not my question really, because I'm not the head. I mean, the minister, and now the minister is also supposed to resign. So I think for me, uh, it, I, I don't want to comment on that. The only thing I would say that it's a bit a, a very big type of recommendation because if the means I suppose again to, this, do, do, you are saying the board should resign. She, she is the one. Then you disband. Then she is the supposed to re retire. I mean to resign, and then you are saying um, um, even the ex the, the ex that is the manager to manage to go. You mm. there will be a lot of virtue there. So for me. It's not immediate because I'm not the implementer, but of course, I, I, I think that there will be some bit of engagement to find out what can be implemented and, and what, what, is it possible to implement, is it not possible? Um, and for me, that's really a debate that I didn't want to go into because I'm not the implementer really. Okay. Yeah. 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 So thank you very much, Dr. Uh, I think you have exhausted. Yeah. Uh, maybe we shall keep on looking for you if yes. need yes. be. I right. want to thank you for the information and yes. the, the time you've given us as UBC. So That's we right, shall yeah. use this information mm -hmm. accordingly yes. whenever events arise. Yeah, so I want right. to thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. And I just want to thank the parliament mm -hmm. uh, for this, this um, piece of uh, work they have done because they have added value because now there are a lot of areas that I see as reforming. Uh, we also are waiting the outcome of the IGG and the Auditor uh, General uh, uh, and also other institutions and I think all this will assist us uh, to improve on the situation. When I say us, it does not mean me as a member of the board. When I say us, because even whether I'm a member of the board or not, I'm a Secretary General of the Centre and I'm part of the tripartite and this is as workers. So it is really work 
which is going to assist the board, to assist the, even the centers, to assist even the government to make sure that, he, and also the workers, because there are a lot of recommendations that we think, uh, like for instance, there are issues we have been dealing with, like in terms of the uh, investments, like rural mm. uh, workers are sort of, um, uh, cannot afford those investments, and yet you find the workers are renting. Like for instance, if you if you are a younger worker, you need a house of about a hundred million. I mean, a hundred thousand per month. Mm. At the end of the year, that's one point two. Uh, and in, in the ten years, that's already twelve million. Mm. No, no, no. It's, it's you know, one point two in a year. If you are paying a hundred thousand, and in, in 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 ten years, about twelve million. Now, we have been struggling and saying. Can we find a way we can have an affordable housing unit so that instead of a member, because if you work and you pay 20 years and you're paying rent, within 20 years you are paid rent but you don't have a house. Mm. And yet you can use that same rent to do mortgage. Yes. Yeah, so we are saying why can't we have a product where workers can, we can support workers to use their rent and turn it into, into, into a mortgage. So that if I, then I see maybe my house, I need maybe a house of 200 or 500, then we, we get a house of that nature, we find out how much you are. So that you, your master the rent becomes a mortgage. So we think that NSSF can be able to assist this because uh, we have been having a challenge, in, uh, in, especially in developed countries, where the return on, on capital is more than the return on, on the human resource. In developed countries, the money that goes to the human resource is 70 percent goes to, to, to human resource, 30 percent goes into, into capital. But in Africa, or like Uganda, 70 mm. percent goes to capital and 30 percent. That's why you have low salaries. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, and you can only have bigger salaries if you change the, the other way around. So, we think that NSSF, is because we have big amounts of money with us, and we're also uh, working with the workers, we can be able to participate in that debate to see how we can sort out those distortions uh, in the labor markets and also in the economy. Okay. And also try to assist the workers uh, be able to have products in terms of social health, social insurance, but also in terms of housing, also in terms of medical insurance, um, in terms of other products. Many, many products that can come out of this and the workers can benefit. So we, I want to thank the UBC uh, for this kind of opportunity. Okay to give this information and also to engage. And also want to f f thank the uh, ministry, the minister, the president actually for having allowed this investigation. Uh, and also the NSF board for what they are doing. Uh, the acting manage the management, acting managing director, the other members of management, and the workers of NSF, the indigenous workers, uh, to say that uh, thank you for the great work you are doing for development, but also be able to be part of a national social fund Thank you. For your future. Thank you. Thank At you what percentage much. do you think the the, 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 the the savers fund is safe? No, I think for me it is a hundred percent safe because Thank you. With this type of uh, investigation, uh, you find that because uh, investigation of this nature they, they, they sort of like prevent future challenges. So and uh, when you find even what the investigation are trying to do, they are, they are, they, the money that could be wasted is not the principle is about the money that is being the interest, the operation, because that's the area that you, I mean, what has gone into housing, into, into certain investment, that what has gone into, into operation. But the other money, which is the, the 17 trillion, the biggest proportion is already in investments, and you know, so it's very safe. Thank so you. So for me, I know this is 100% safe. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.